China is the fourth largest country in the world and it is said to have the largest population on the planet, making it one of the most powerful countries worldwide. Yet China has a weakness since the country is severely impacted by desertification, with over one quarter of the country affected by this challenge. This is a problem since desertification threatens human subsistence, as it makes natural resources including food and water much more difficult to obtain. This undermines agricultural output. Furthermore, desert dunes threaten to bury fields and infrastructure in sand. Currently, China has 6.6 .6 million square kilometers of dry land, which are vulnerable to desertification. Thus, much of the continent is at risk, and China has many deserts, covering 27% of the country's land area. However, a miracle is taking place in one of China's four major deserts, called the Muus Desert, which is also known as the Maosu Desert. In this desert, an unbelievable effort has taken place. For the first time in history, a man-made desert has totally been transformed. 80% of the Muus Desert has now turned into green forest. Amazingly, this desert has now officially reached the tipping point, that it can no longer be called a desert since the control rate of desertified land has reached over 90%. This remarkable restoration story is a perfect example of how it can be possible to bring life back to barren land. And it would not have been possible if it wasn't for the ingenuity of one woman named Yin, devoting 35 years of her life to regreening the desert. This transformation was no easy feat. In the beginning, very few saplings survived just a mere 1%, but over time, Yim managed to increase the success rate, up to 70%. She did this by working tirelessly, trying different techniques. In this video, we will show you how this incredible woman managed to turn the desert into a thriving ecological park that is bursting with biodiversity, having planted well over 300,000 native trees and plants, with at least 100 different species. We will also look at the ingenious techniques she used to make the desert turn green again. So stick with us as we dive into today's video. Yin Yu Shen was born in a small village. Growing up poor, she explained how her family could barely afford the clothes on her back, let alone food to get by. By the time she was 19, her parents wished for her to get married. They arranged for her to marry the son of a family friend called Bai Wang Xiang, who was living in extreme conditions in the Muus Desert, located in Inner Mongolia, northern China. The name of the desert, Muus, comes from the Mongolian language and translates as bad water, attributing to the poor water quality in the area. It is believed that numerous rivers flowed through this region. Over time, the climate changed, and as early as 218 BC, Grazing was the main way of life for the local people. And by the 1980s and 1990s, the ecological environment of the Muas Desert had severely deteriorated due to overgrazing and poor land management. The desert had become one of the main sources of sandstorms in the Beijing region. When Yin arrived at her new desert home in 1985, she was shocked. Despite being poor, the condition of her husband's home were much worse than she could have imagined. She recalled the first time she set eyes on the house, she had wept for seven days. The dwelling was a small mud cave. The roof of the house was constructed out of an assortment of wood tied together with bits and pieces of rope and straw. You had to bend down to get inside and curl up into a ball to sleep, since lying straight would mean your feet would stick out of the front door. Furthermore, Frequent sandstorms would last for days. The wind would blow so much sand around the home that it had to be regularly shoveled away as not to be completely buried. Yin said the sandstorms were so bad that the sand would come out of your eyes, ears and nose and it would make a pile in your hand. As a kid, Yin had been energetic, hypersocial and a leader amongst other kids. Suddenly now as a young woman, she found herself surrounded by a barren desert with a new husband, who she said doesn't speak very much. 
she felt desperately alone in the first 40 days of living there. She said she did not see another human being, and the first time she did, she was so deprived of other human contact that she ran to the man ultimately scaring him off. The Muas Desert is so desolate because it's such a sterile environment. It's considered a cold desert with a mean temperature between 6 degrees Celsius and 8.5 degrees Celsius. The mean annual precipitation is between 250 millimeters and 400 millimeters, of which the majority falls in the summer. And the Muas Desert climate is described as having one wind per year, traveling from spring to winter continuously. These winds made it difficult for outsiders to enter the village, which made the situation even more isolating. Yin said that she contemplated leaving the village, and when consulting her husband on the matter, he begged her to stay with him, saying he would not survive without her. Yin even had thoughts of ending her life. Ultimately, she decided to stay, but still frustrated with the living conditions, Yin came to a critical decision that would change her life forever. She decided she would rather wear herself down by planting trees to combat the desert than being beaten by the environment. She knew nothing about planting trees, and since she couldn't read or write and had no one to advise her, learning was all trial and error. She started off with a few trees outside of their cave, and her husband Bai supported the project. He began working elsewhere to earn a little bit of money, which all went to buy seedlings, and they had to beg for food to get by. Despite this, Yin cared for the trees as well as she could. She nourished them with water from their well. She would carry the water on her back over the sand dunes in the harsh conditions. When sandstorms uprooted the seedlings, she tried to replant them. She also plucked insects off of the branches one by one, using twigs as chopsticks. The desiccating wind was particularly challenging, yet she couldn't plant the trees in sheltered hollows, because sand accumulated there and buried everything. Of her first thousand trees, only ten survived. Although Yin had no school learning, she had an active mind. So as she did her household chores, she tried to work out problems in her head. She decided to stabilize the soil with grass, then shrubs, before adding trees. The first time she tried planting grass seeds, sadly, desert mice ate them more. So she tried to plant them deeper by hoeing a furrow, but the mice got them too. Since the couple had two sheep, Yin decided to take the sheep with her to plant the seeds in the hoof prints, which worked out well since the sheep smell masked the seeds, which meant the mice didn't find them and the grass grew. Apart from being a problem solver, Yin was a conceptual thinker. Instead of planting the local willow tree sapling she had done previously that had a low success rate, she instead decided to plant tall hardy trees, such as poplars and Mongolian scotch pines on the outer perimeter to help keep the desert at bay. She planted somewhat smaller trees in the middle, along with stabilizing bushes. Her plan was to create a fortress and afterwards plant fruit trees and crops to protect the center where they lived. After 10 years, Yin's hard work began to pay dividends because in that part of China, those who plant trees in the desert have a right to use the land. Yin lived on the border of Yu Banner and Shanghai province and had planted trees in both districts. Some business people and politicians from Shanghai discovered the trees and paid some local bureaucrats to take much of the land away from her. She couldn't fight them directly, but a distant relative suggested that she contact the media. Yin may not have known how to read, but she was an articulate and confident talker. Reporters came from all over the country to hear her story. And in the end, she won back most of the land that she planted. Then around the year 2000, the government began to officially approve of her and what she did. The government even started to incorporate her techniques into their large-scale afforestation schemes by also planting hardy Mongolian pines and using checkerboard furrows to plant seeds, just as Yin had done to plant her seedlings. Now the poor beggar girl in the barren desert controlled 70,000 hectares of land, 
and the central government recognized her as a model worker and had decorated her many times with awards. She was even one of the torchbearers in the 2008 Beijing Olympics. It is said there are five people's heroes in China, and she is one of them. Her nickname, without irony, is Model Citizen. Internationally, her desert reclamation work has won environmental awards, and she was also nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2005. Every year on Earth Day, which happens to be Yin's birthday, April 22nd, a number of Chinese CEOs come and ceremonially plant trees for a morning, then they pay for the tree's upkeep during the year. Yin and her husband Bai no longer live in a mud hut. The government paved eight kilometers of road to her place, then built a small house for her with roof beams from one of her first poplars. There are also several outbuildings, including a museum, a farm to kitchen restaurant, and even a big hotel where visitors can stay. Their home and eco-resort is surrounded by 300,000 trees, which they planted over the last 30 years, creating countless oases of bushes and trees on an area of 40 square kilometers. Yin and her husband also planted more than 100 different bush and tree species. They learned which ones grew the best, thus developing a very effective method of fighting against the sand in these areas. Yin is now a respected expert for greening the desert. The couple make a living selling their many crops, such as potatoes, carrots, millet, corns, grapes and watermelons. They also have pear trees, peach trees and apricot trees. With the profits from their farm, they hire workers to help plant even more trees. Yin also leads the neighboring villages to plant trees in controlling desertification together. Her story has also motivated many peasants and herdsmen across China to join her in regreening the desert. Yin said, it takes a lot of time, but someday dew is coming, then rain, not a violent one, not often, but visibly, and then there are bees, birds and butterflies following. Yin is happy that her hard work meant her children do not have to suffer even after having a miscarriage from falling down when carrying trees from town to the desert. Yin said, to keep herself motivated, she created a song that she would sing to herself to get through the troubling times, which was called The Desert Hymn. <laughs> 一个树绿又成一片月古水草飞 Thanks for watching this video and please make sure to check out Leaf of Life Music. It's a new channel we've created so do go and check it out here or from the link in the description.